everybody. Hi, this is Queen. I hope you're having a great day wherever you are, right? And today there's a lot of important news I really want to go through, yeah? So, hope you're now having a great day and let's get started, right? First one, right? Um, tone base, which is a very, um, it's a Bitcoin dying heart, which previously is from the traditional world, you know, who is a renowned uh, market trader, formerly with JP Morgan. So he basically is making a very bold statement that when Bitcoin reverses, altcoins won't return. Basically, the implication that he is saying is something that is quite new. It's basically saying, and the interesting thing is, the same idea, the same concept is being you know, also mentioned by another big uh, company in another report, which is one of their main predictions for 2019. Let's get into it, right? But let's talk about tone base first in this article, yeah? Um, basically, he what he's saying is that, uh, you know, in 2019, Bitcoin, you know, will definitely rally, but the other coins, alternative coins, will basically do less well you know definitely don't expect any more like the altcoin bubble that means basically you know they will perform uh, much much higher than you know bitcoin as in the last uh peak which is late 2017 early 2018 when if bitcoin go up by 10 percent right the altcoins the smaller coins are basically go up can go up by as high as 20 percent that kind of magnitude so he's basically saying you know he's basically turning the quashing the hopes right for altcoins to perform at a stellar you know level just like yes it before so it basically saying it won't happen and basically saying cementing the dominance of bitcoin even more yeah so then there will be clear winners and you know there'll be clear um people who are like will be like the amazon and the google of the future in crypto yeah so um, altcoins won't return, Bitcoin will reign. Basically, that's what he's saying. Coin Telegraph recently sent out a tone base. A former traditional markets traders turned Bitcoin diehard. Talk about what happened to the crypto sphere in 2018 and what he expects will occur heading into 2019. Interestingly, contrary to the bearish sentiment he talked in recent months, the analysts claim that BTC will perform well during 2019. Vase, when asked about what was crypto's most important event in 2018, drew attention to the decline in Bitcoin price and more importantly, col correlated collapse in the majority of crypto assets, which is altcoins, alternative coins. The trader formerly of JP Morgan explained that the 2018 spam market is significantly different from what happened in 2014 and 2015. The content creator noted that this time round, the altcoin bubble will not return. That is very key. Anything he does not expect, you know, for alternative crypto assets to undergo a resurgence. Ways hinted at the fact that the industry has already preemptively indicated that altcoins won't return, as made apparent by the Bitcoin Cash debacle, he called it an implosion, and other smaller events that accentuate the irrelevancy of this coin. So, while some bash raised for his belief, he was only recently he has only recently doubled down on this anti altcoin sentiment. Vase has claimed that Ethereum could fall to just twenty cents, just shy of its original price stimulated by its token offering. Yeah, Jimmy Song, a leading Bitcoin educator, commentator, and developer, equaled voice point, explaining that many crappy projects altcoins are in the midst of their death throes and will be eventually flushed out of this ecosystem. Song explaining why this industry occurrence is significant, noted that there has been a lot of male investment in this space, making the revolver of um, removal of fluff of worthless projects positive bona fide investment opportunities. Yeah. So basically then it is um, key that, you know, to really, I guess the point is to be, um, now is really a good time, right? As the New Year's resolution, as you actually review what you're going to do in the new year of 2019, it's also good to actually, you know, review basically what you have in your balance sheet, in your, you know, how do you spend, how do you make your money, you know, your income and um, loss statements. And also, right, basically how do you allocate assets across the different asset class right it could be equity bonds cash um you know uh hard metal you know and of course cryptocurrencies and within cryptocurrencies it's also important to see you know does all this um different coins that you have in your portfolios does it still make sense right it's really important then to 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 weigh this right in the midst of how you know the the trend is now turning out right basically yeah, don't just hold on and just hope for it to 
keep rising but I guess you must also hold things that have seem to have you know um, delivered as promised right and also something that has like is really been established a track record and something that has really been recognized by a lot of the major players out there yeah so who are the which are the coins that's always being quoted you know that they're going to um, list and trade by you know backed or even Nasdaq futures next year. Th those are still only really the top three or top five, right? So really, um, be very careful about what you have in your portfolio. All right. Next up, right? Um, AT Kearney, which is one of the largest management consultancy firm, right? After yesterday, we have uh, PwC, uh, which is one of the major audit and tax firm. Right, one of the one of the handful, one of the really handful, one of the top five uh, tax and audit company in the world, PwC, also is very positive on the overall crypto market. Now you have another um another uh, management consultancy, AT Kearney, which have come out with the you know twenty nineteen top ten predictions, and in number two they talk about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency market, and specifically they say Bitcoin will lead the consolidation and maturation of the cryptocurrency market. Market. And among the key points that basically they said, right, um, you don't need to look at the, what happened in the last year because they always start with that. So they said, despite these obstacles, which means all the problems in 2018, the cryptocurrency market will begin its second decade, decade in a state of post-crash consolidation and maturation. By the end of 2019, Bitcoin will reclaim nearly two-thirds of the big crypto market capitalization as altcoins lose their luster because of growing risk aversion among cryptocurrency investors. More broadly, financial regulators will soften their stance towards the sector. The UK Parliament's Treasury Committee, which wants to end a wild west of crypto market, will pursue regulations intended to stifle criminal activity and reduce price volatility as it tries to make UK a hub for cryptocurrency markets. At the same time, the US Securities and Exchange Commission will warm to Bitcoin exchange traded funds and with the US Commodities Futures Trading Commission will continue to work to improve market transparency. Ironically, for cryptocurrencies to see a third decade, the only viable path forward involves this acceptance by the international financial system that Bitcoin once sought to defeat. Cognizant of this, the recently formed Blockchain Association will begin to lobby American um, policymakers to improve cryptocurrencies' image in 2019. So very quickly then, having read that, you know, that's all is in this report about cryptocurrency, the key point is, again, so the two key points, right? One is uh, Bitcoin will get to as high as 67% of the total crypto market cap in 2019. That's what they predict. And this will be huge if they are correct, right? So similar um, tones or ideas that you can see, right? There's basically echo by both Tone Vase and Jimmy Song, who are people who have actually, you know, been in this space very long, right? And who have seen a lot of the trends. Um, so this is very interesting. So definitely, if you are, you know, if you believe in crypto, you know, and now the crypto Bitcoin prices, especially low, definitely you know, now, I think, at least my opinion, not financial advice, is definitely a good time to actually buy now, yeah? The other thing is that, which is a very good, important point as well. So you basically see next year being very positive, but he, they are predicting an ETF. That one, I'm, I'm not really sure, but definitely um, the newly formed blockchain association is very cool because they were just, um, you know, re recently developed or uh, launched in September 29, uh, 2018. And, you know, they have only uh, recently just recruited one person to be like their liaison partner, Right, that will be in touch with the um, governments, you know, and whoever that is, you know, the, basically the regulatory bodies to talk about cryptocurrencies. And who are the people behind Blockchain Association currently? First, they're still growing and recruiting members, but currently they already have very strong backers. Among their members include people like Coinbase, Coinbase, which is the you know one of the most prominent crypto exchange in US also has, you know, um, one of their investors is none other than Tim Draper's family and his son, Adam Draper, right? The other thing, the other one is Circle, which is, you know, has, uh, basically their investors are among others, none other than Goldman Sachs, right? So just these um, kind of investors, right? And I'm sure others will probably have backing as well and relationship to, you know, either venture capitalists or, people who are, you know, Wall Street related. 
So blockchain association is very great, right? And definitely these are the people with such strong backing. They definitely can get in front of the regulators, you know, much more better. And they can know what the regulators want. And, you know, again, they can speak their lingo. And, you know, for them to, to that kind of connection, because they just know each other as well, right? Because a lot of the people in the Congress, they were also from a lot of, from Goldman Sachs as well, don't forget. So they will definitely have a very positive impact for the overall cryptocurrency market um, going forward, right? So it's probably 2019 and 2020 because, you know, so they, re they are very new. They are still recruiting manpower to beef up their team more. But definitely already, they already have Coinbase and Circle who are already linked with people, Goldman Sachs and Team Triple, very, very connected, high power individuals, right? Who know a lot of people. So definitely they, you know, they are um, going to be lobby the regulators very hard. And that's why, and I, that maybe have a linkage, right? Why recently, not too long ago, just this month, there were two congressmen, right? Basically who are so positive, right? Who come out in the news that says that they are going to, you know, really going to make crypto regulations much more friendly, just like how they have done it for internet. So all this is like super positive for the industry. Yeah. Next. The other one, again, super positive, right? Because it's China market, right? Adoption is super high there, right? Um, and this is the first time we have confirmation as in a news article because um, at least for me, I have heard that, you know, it's always true that although the government has um, explicitly in the news banning cryptocurrencies, you know, making it like they, no one in the country can have cryptocurrencies, but in reality, the people on the ground are very creative and they really get, you know, basically the market dictates, right? So if there is enough demand, people will find a way. And that's exactly what happened, you know, from this survey that is found. But so it's a survey conducted by Par News, right? Among how many people? It's about 4,200 Chinese citizens. And they have found that 14, 1,4% of Chinese citizens have invested in cryptocurrency. This is huge because globally, you are only still talking about less than 5% of the people have, you know, cryptocurrencies, yeah? So in China, 14%, this is really huge. So the survey also found that 98% of the respondents indicate familiarity with the concepts of cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. 3% more that, than those who stated that they have heard of blockchain technology. So 14% invested. That means the 98%, the bulk of the people surveyed already know about this, but maybe because of some, you know, um, confidence level or, you know, just... Um, yeah, lack of proper education that or just fear of uh, regulations that they're still not yet invested. But 14% is really high, yeah? Um, yeah, so it's, it's amazing, I think. Uh, yeah. So then the thing is this, only, only 17%, which is about 2% of the people have not heard of cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, but 16% of the respondents describe common perceptions regarding complexity of exchanging and storing cryptocurrencies as the primary barrier to greater, greater crypto adoption. So it's really the storing. So it's the fear of losing the assets, yeah, basically. Um, yeah, so, I mean, come on. China, right, being such a huge market, I mean, just look at their population, it's really huge. And how many rich people are in China? Um, can you imagine one day, you know, when they really want to, when they, um, when the government want to come out and legalize cryptocurrency, then what will it do to the prices, right? Yeah. Um, yes, but we do have another news that China do plan to sideline Bitcoin for investors. This, the implication basically, right, I'm not going to read through all, but basically why they say that is that, you know, they are, um, they, are, they have posted six job openings. The Central Bank of China has posted six job openings at its Digital Currency Institute in Beijing in October, seeking candidates with expertise in anything from software and encryption to law and economic research. Doesn't it sound familiar? Just like what Facebook has done recently, right? They have been posting on LinkedIn to actually recruit people with blockchain experience and uh, um, yeah, all these things. So very similar story. So there is a... Um, speculation that China will develop its own cryptocurrency, you know, but that will mean disaster for its citizens. But I think what will happen is that, right, China's citizens being so connected now in a global world, they have so much information. I think even if government go ahead with, a, a, you know, um, how do I say, government um, government-backed digital currency, right? But 
I think the people will still find a way to actually use Bitcoin among and also other major top co um, cryptocurrencies as a strong alternative to you know not being tracked because everything else will be tracked if uh if they roll out a you know government backed digital currency. Yeah. Next up. Um, will pension funds soon be investing in crypto? That what happened was there was a rumor and it, there was a tweet by Zero H. Zero H is basically a blog, right? Um, that is owned by ABC Media. They basically come up with uh, sometimes very thought-provoking um, articles and normally they have a lot of uh, evidence and they will cover news that are not generally covered by mainstream. So definitely check out their sites, right? Um, but the thing is this, they, they have just a tweet that says pensions now buying cryptos, but unfortunately they have no backing to back this up, right? So maybe, I don't know, it could be that they can't put the evidence, but whatever it is, right? Um, um, yes, but so now the thing is, this is just a speculation, but if it happens, then it will definitely be great news again for cryptocurrencies, right? And not too long ago, Anthony Pompliano, again, a very, um, very respected, uh, you know, voice in crypto space. He's basically, um, you know, he basically blocked or he basically encouraged, right? Why pension funds need to buy Bitcoin, yeah? So the thing is that uh, basically, you know, it takes... For them, it's really because they fear, right? This volatile asset, they really cannot afford to lose the their capital, right? So definitely, it is not. So for pension funds, that's why today there's still no pension funds that invested in cryptocurrency, at least not officially. So because they really need to, you know, they cannot have such volatile volatility that it could be thirty percent up and down in a day, right? They cannot withstand such volatility. So. But the thing is, of course, right, Anthony Pompliano is definitely a, a bull on crypto. He basically believes in the next five to 10 years, right? Crypto or Bitcoin will definitely outperform the S&P market. So that's why that's one of the reasons why he thinks every pension fund should have some Bitcoin. Now, but having said that, now, whatever it is, right, if, um, let's hope that, you know, Anthony Pompliano voice gets through to the pension funds, right? The other thing is, of course, then if the rumor turned out to be correct by zero H, then it'd be really, really good for crypto in 2019. But the thing is, even not, right, then I think the Blockchain Association lobbying the government to have crypto-friendly regulations will definitely bring more clarity to this space and then that will give more confidence for the pension funds, right, to actually invest, yeah? Next, Huobi launching first crypto exchange that uses EOS as a base currency. Now, I think this is basically very good for EOS, right? Um, yeah, so I think that's what I want to say. This is basically all going to be operation in, in Q1 2019. And it is interesting that, you know, they are basically using EOS, which is the fifth largest um, token today in terms of market cap. This, uh, But it's interesting because it, you know, it's a, a fast riser, right? Uh, rising star because it was just listed in um, April 2018 and just a few months of history. And with the largest amount raised at $4 billion total, and they're committing $1 billion of those, 25% of the $4 billion, which is a lot, a lot of money, into you know developing its product and its platform. And it's really huge because other SEOs is you're talking about tens of millions normally in that range. But this is really, you know, outsized is that one billion, I mean four billion, and then out of that one billion, it just into the platform. And of course, they do have very strong backers, among others, is um um Michael Novogratz, which is a former Goldman Sachs partner. Yeah. So again, very connected individual. Next up, also in, re in related to exchange, there's also going to be a new crypto exchange called Bit Interpay that will enter the global market with exciting fe features for users. Now, this is based in Estonia. And basically, they claim, right, that their specialty is that, let me just look at this, right? What is their specialty they claimed is that a completely legal and licensed platform because they're guided by laws of Estonia, EU, ease of use, they offer all site functionalities and tools on a simple, user-friendly and supported platform. All user requests are processed quickly and efficiently. Practical bit interface allows the sale and purchase of cryptocurrency for USD and Euro from more than 50 countries. Quick, it takes just around 10 minutes to pass verification and make a purchase. Convenient, support existing payment system like pay via credit card and app for cash. Mobile is available as an advanced mobile app. Secure, right? Um, yeah. So basically, then I went on to their site just to see 
is it really as good as they claim, right? But my takeaway is that, right, it's really, okay, it is quite user-friendly because, you know, you can actually say, you know, if I put $100 in fiat, how much do I get in BTC? In that sense, it gives people a quick um, sense and knowledge of how much they will get if they put in a certain amount. But the thing is then, what is the difference, right, with them compared to like a Coinbase and so on? Maybe they said their verification is faster, but still, you know, I when I click into it, it's the same process. Basically, you still have to, you know, hold up your selfie, hold up your ID, you know, and take a photo and still go through it. Although they say it's fast, right? So perhaps the process is a bit more automated, right? Maybe they have more people. But the thing is that you still require to give up your privacy, right? When you sign up with them. And the thing is currently they accept credit card and the fees are huge. Credit card fees is 5% and on top of that, they charge 1%. So it's 6% fees in total. This is really high, right? It's, it's as high as, um, even higher than some ATMs, you know, for some countries like in Singapore, I can get, uh, I can buy crypto from ATMs at, you know, less than 3% fee, sometimes even as lower than 2%. So, you know, then, so I, I'm thinking, you know, what is the real differentiation? So I think it's more a marketing ploy than anything, but of course, it's based in Estonia, so definitely it will get more exposure to people there, definitely. So I think there will be um there will have clients and business still, but I don't see them really overtaking a lot of the major ones like Binance, Coinbase, you know, and so on. Yeah. Then the other thing is um there's also not too long ago, just December 10th, right? The Square. Square is basically um is a mobile-based, how do I say, peer-to-peer -peer transfer, right? something like Alipay in China, right? They basically have already overtaken Coinbase as the number one Bitcoin buying app on your mobile phone. So how are they going to compete with someone like Square, right? So let me just go there. So this, this is a tweet, right? Which is interesting that says basically um, just in December, the uh, early December, Square Cash app already, you know, um, overtaken Bitcoin as the easiest way to buy Bitcoin. And that's no surprise because they already have a lot of their customers who are already young millennials who are already on their platform, you know, doing instant send and receive money among their peers using mobile phone without going through the banks, yeah? So for then, not, not too long ago, they basically introduced a new feature that basically, you know, they, they now... Um, allow people to also just uh, buy cryptocurrency, buy, sell, and trade, right? That's what I say. Yeah, buy, spend, and send. So basically, you want to send over. Buy, sell, and spend, right? Sorry, buy, transfer, and spend. And basically then, uh, why is it so taking on so fast? Because you see, for people who already use Square, they don't need to, they already have given their identity proofs to Square when they sign up. So now they don't need to go through another uh, know your customer, you know, verification of identity process. So that's very quick. So they can straight away use an existing platform, existing ecosystem, which they use daily anyway, you know, to buy and send cryptocurrencies to their peers or their families, right? And of course, right, to then spend it as well. So definitely, it's amazing, right? And of course, the Jack Dorsey, which is the CEO of Square, who is also, also the CEO of Twitter, basically say that, this invention or this feature that's added to Square is actually not trying to make money, but it's more like because they see this as such an important innovation that they need to make people, you know, much more easier to actually get hold of this cryptocurrency. So again, I think this is definitely very good, right? So although the bit interpay, I don't see this as a very much innovative exchange despite them marketing it as such. But I still do see that more and more players coming up will be very good, you know, when the market boom again in the future, then definitely there will be more options for people because if one exchange is slower in processing the, the transactions or in processing the onboarding of new customers, at least then they have more options to go to other exchange, right? Just like what happened in early 2017, uh, late 2017, early 2018, when Coinbase was it taking a few days, right, to onboard new customers. That's uh, creating a big backlog. And for people who want to buy, they can't buy, right? So definitely alternatives like Square, like BitInterpay and Huopi now, is definitely very good, yeah. Um, next, right, another um, another very key offering to actually cement the foundational layer of the cryptocurrency is 
Huobi and major Russian bank is basically has joined hand to actually provide legal help. So they are like the legal advisor. This is interesting because currently we do, you know, currently we talk a lot about le um, you know, regulations clarity, but you do need someone to represent the players as well in this space, and that's what they are going to do. Yeah. Let me read. The recently established Russian subsidiary of global cryptocurrency exchange Huobi and Venetian Konom Bank, Russia's state-owned development bank, are now partnering to offer crypto companies legal support and advice. The now create the newly created legal lab will also represent blockchain businesses in court. So that, again, this is really interesting. Um, yeah, because that uh, you know these kind of things, um, these kind of offerings, and by by such a famous name like Huobi, which is like the uh, you know among the top either the number three largest, probably number three largest now, in terms of the um, trading volume exchange right in the world they they are the one you know who come up and this space to basically make the foundational foundational layers much more stronger and that's amazing right this is almost similar to the story right when we were small we thought we there were the story for the three little pigs right who built their houses first on um twigs right on uh sorry on straw first right on straw and then the wind just blow and they were you know they they lost their house straight away and then they, they advanced further. Then next, they built their houses on twigs, right? Um, tree branches, twigs, right? And same thing happened, right? But this time a bit longer, but same thing. It's still blown down by the wind. And finally, they decided to be, they are smarter now, and they built their houses on bricks, right? Cements and bricks. So then now, this time it's super strong, and the wind and the wolf cannot get to them as well. So similarly, I see this in the crypto. It's basically, it's almost like an evolution like the pigs, right? They, uh, the three little pigs, they basically, you know, they're getting smarter. Now we are like, you know, we have gone through 10 years of Bitcoin history, but really only last few years, last maybe four or five years, they have gone through mainstream. Now, this is the time to really beef up on the regulations, right? So now maybe we are going into the tweak phase, which is the second phase, right? Because now it's just starting to um, lobby regulators, right? We're not yet definitely in the cement phase. There's so definitely a lot of potential ahead. Next up, right? Italian government selects 30 representatives to develop DLT and crypto policy. I'm not going to read this, but basically, again, the implication is that Italy... We haven't heard of Italy, right? But we did hear a lot of France, right? A lot of UK being very crypto friendly that they want to make their regulations very crypto friendly, you know? And now the latest um, person who joined the party is Italian. So that again is very good news, yeah? Um, last one for today, right? Um, Bitmain said, Chinese media reporting Jihan Wu and Mai Kri Chan to step down. Um, I think this is still a speculation for now. Yes, it is a speculation for now. But basically, that they say that um, Bitmain Bay being the largest mining company for cryptocurrencies, right? That they based in Beijing, China. Um, so there is already last few days has been all negative news on them because you know they are losing money, so they are making losses. That they are rumored they have they have actually said they are going to lay lay off half of their staff and there are rumors that basically say because they run so low on cash that they have no choice but they may have to resort to selling you know one million of one million each of their bitcoin cash and litecoin because they have one million each of this and because of that you know prices of bitcoin cash and litecoin will suffer because of this but they really have no choice if you're in their shoes what will you do because if not they will really go bankrupt right and this is amazing because just a few months ago that they were news that they said they want to um file for listing like official listing on the hong kong exchange um they are, um you know the application is being rejected by the hong kong regulators uh, but now, of course, then there's news that, you know, their CEO and chairman have to step down. There's not, of course, not officially backed up by the um, company. But, you know, then again, it's no surprise because um, someone has to take the blame, right, really? So, but anyway, I will just end it here. Um, so regardless, I think I think overall news is still very, very positive on overall cryptocurrencies in this holiday market. You know, very interesting that everything is coming out in this holiday period, which a lot of people probably are not so much bothered about the news. But regardless, you know, 
if you listen to this and if you like this, please like, please subscribe, please leave a comment and please share this with as many people as you can. So we really need to increase awareness how, how much good stuff, you know, are happening in the crypto space, you know, to build up the strong foundational layer to basically then, you know, so that in the future, the industry will basically become more mature and right, basically then become less volatile. But definitely there's still a lot of potential for the major cryptocurrencies yeah thank you so much for watching and hope you have a great day wherever you are continue to enjoy enjoy the last few days of 2018 um yeah live with high energy live with passion thank you so much for watching